Hi, everybody. Oh, hello. Hi there. How y'all doing? Who would put cucumbers on Oh, my God. No, don't <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! That's not right. No, and now it's, it's on It's there we this go. one. Done. Hi, everybody. God damn it. Hi. I blame I... Jay, but also I kept it going. So... All it takes... It was a theory. You, you guys... screens, and I'm proud of him. Oh. I have. It's been great. Not a pizza, it, though. All it takes is for one person to bring up any food in any context, and suddenly everybody's <laughs> like, you're wrong, and they're screaming. <laughs> it's shouting across the stars. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, you can I'm... find a way to make, like, the timer talk, like, subscriber-only content. Like, just <laughs> whatever we talk about before. <laughs> I don't know. You figure it out, and I'll go for it. Uh, all right, anyway. Sounds good. Uh, so last time on Dragon Ball Z, we finished up the la uh, the fourth trial, question mark. I believe that's right uh and we started the fifth chapter now we're in uh a pawn shop trying to get back i think we got back Sholmes's viola wait is the viola the correct one or is it the violin uh the violin is the correct one uh, it's a stradivarius the one he received hmm. mistake that's right i believe you're correct yes um confirmation and now uh gina lestrade is being uh accused of thievery by a Jojo man who's calling himself oh, Eggert yeah. Benedict, and I refuse that. Um, <laughs> Why and, would you do that? And Sholmes is about to get very Sholmesy on us, so let's get back into it. Also, the uh, proprietor of the uh, pawn shop is reaching death flag critical mass here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will be surprised if this man does not die. Mm -hmm. the, the, the outside of the world... Shoot, United Nations building with all those flags in a, in a row. That is this man's house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jay, you're up. This man lives I, I in get the what, land. I get what house you're meaning. I don't know what it's called. World Nations. That things happen. Oh, is it? You were there in there once. Anyway. Uh, what? Well, Miss Mistrad, it would appear that oh. you're in something of a predicament. <laughs> it was voiced by Jack Black. It was. Where in the blue blazes have you been, eh? <laughs> Good one. Well, pardon, it's only been a week. When a lady's in trouble, a true, a true gen's supposed to be there to help. Straight away, not an hour later. <laughs> Harsh. You told him to go away. <laughs> there he is. Egg. And who, pray tell, are you? Not an egg. Yes, because that's me. Uh, oh, Mr. Egg ben or a uh, Eggert Benedict, you have, in my eyes, a veritably, a veritably, encyclopedable array of curiosities about your person. By the way, chat, how are all the volume levels? Keep me updated on that. Please let us know. Nevertheless, there are two immovable conclusions I have drawn. Oh dear. I beg your pardon. The first is this. The true reason for your visit to this pawnbroker today is something you have not yet revealed. <gasps> and the second is... A considerable crime is in contemplation. One you will orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Mm, that's quite Monday. the accusation. Oh, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> Discord hmm. buddies are a little quiet. Discord buddies uh, are <laughs> apparently a little quiet, um, except... <laughs> um, um, I uh, uh, turn yourself and the game down. Okay, yes. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember saying your stream was louder than ours during uh, Stardew Valley. Anyway, it's not my equalizer. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, I realized, by the way, that Stardew Valley had no game audio. <laughs> no. oh. fixed for tomorrow. I think Oops. we have. Um, that's not, well, that's not the worst game to have yeah. an issue with. Yeah. yeah, they could just watch you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you were yes. talking about all the shadow wave and then <laughs> yeah, or dark wave and uh, no, I think I think the music made it. All right, chat. Okay. That's uh, that. That's uh, that's the new levels. Tell me how that sounds. Okay. Please keep us updated. Well, Mr. Benedict. What say you to my deductions? How? He's turned as white as a hard-boiled egg. It would seem that once again, 
Mr. Sholmes has made a flawless deduction. At art, can't tell if that's better or worse than my RE6 stream last night where the game audio was ahead by like a full second or two. We have had that problem. Oh, yep. it sucks. It's Audio terrible. issues <laughs> are the worst issues. Yes, because you it's impossible to tell that they're happening while they're happening unless somebody tells you. Just who do you think you are, sir? Ah, yes, as I had hoped. That is precisely the pained expression I was looking for. We are going to have the best pose off. <laughs> so, shall we begin? The time has come for yet another Herlock Sholmes logic and reasoning spectacular. All right, I'm ready for it. Let's do it. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. The game is a visual novel. Mystery Man's Aim. First of all, we must ask ourselves what business you ventured into this pawnbrokery today. You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. But that is most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. A wanted poster? No. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff re recruitment flyer. The piece of paper in your hand is a staff wow. wanted advertisement from this very shop. That's why it says wanted. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, even the most unobservant would soon realize that a man of your appearance does not need such employ. In other words, there are some ulterior motive for your actions. <gasps> the cane, which you unwittingly clutch into your person, exhibits a inconvertible contradiction. What utter rot! I, I've had this cane for years! The contradiction of which I speak of is, of course, the missing fur. You didn't want to. You didn't want to focus on the A G on the handle. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We'll get there. The end of any walking cane would be terminated with a metal fur to protect the wooden tip. <laughs> and yet, detailed analysis shows that the wooden tip of the stick is utterly bare. Therefore, there is only one conclusion. The rod that you hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane, is in fact not a cane at all, but a hammer. Oh! What? You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I... well, I... And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer to the next conundrum to present itself. Is Jay on a roll today with pronunciations? This is going great. The man oh, uses that's... the same goddamn words. I didn't draw attention <laughs> to it. Namely, what is the truth? <laughs> no, right, Wanda. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Bears, 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 bears. Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. From the moment I saw my suspicions were aroused. What walking cane demands such a stout handle, mused I. This is memory. But... Of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. No, that rod is a hammer. It's a gun. Oh. <laughs> it is a broken handle of a shovel. It does kind of look like it. No, it's a spade. It's a spade. Are you insane? And now, having determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear. Your true motive for coming here a shovel was to take employment at this establishment in order to 
excavate the ground beneath the premises. That's gotta be it. Also, we're gonna yes. force the, st the spade thing into a joke if we have to, <laughs> if we have to do it ourselves. Yes. What a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. It doesn't really sound like a crime. But as you can see, you've dug yourself into a hole. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, there's more. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the plan. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, intend to excavate the ground beneath the palm oak room with a broken spade. <laughs> what on earth do you propose I, should, uh, I could expect to find there? Hoo-ha! Some long forgotten treasure, I suppose. Yes. Seems with such a fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too aware, oh. Mr. Benedict. And, oh, ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this and covertly dig beneath its flow. The answer is revealed by the council notice on the counter in which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Okay, so when we fix this, is he going to be looking at the gun? Hmm. 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 This letter gives notice to public workers to be carried out in the local area. Local workers in your local area. And according to the enclosed plan of the upcoming sewerage works, beneath the shop runs a sewer that adjoins another, one that runs under the bank on the opposite side of the road. Interesting. This man has entered the sewers now, has it? But excavating the ground beneath your feet? Oh, by doing that, you would gain access to the waterway. That flows to the very closely pr close proximity to the great vaults of the financial institution opposite. What are you? In summary, sir, Oh. You devise a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery by dint of the underground tunnels. M master plan! <laughs> yes. Which brings us to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. With that plunder, did the thief... Oh, with what planet did the thief hope to make off with from underground from the underground vault of the bank? Are you quite serious? Yes. Having consulted with Scotland Yard some days ago, I happen to know the answer. But naturally, the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know. A postcard of the Great Exhibition. I'm afraid you quite lost me. Currently in the final stages of preparation, the Great Exhibition will soon be underway. And the government has planned or provided extra funds to complete the centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. Funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank, on the other side of this road. Why do you know that? Pardon? Yes, the considerable crime you have been contemplating <laughs> is the theft of which that what sits in the vault of the bank the special reserve fund for the Great Exhibition. Of course, that is top secret police information, so please keep that under your giant hat, please. 
really shouldn't have told us that. <laughs> Conclusion. Loose lip sync ships, Herlock. To steal the Great Exhibition's reserve funds. Great job, Mr. Sholmes. No mispronunciations this time. I did it. I finally did it. Has the ghost been exercised? <laughs> no, oh, Mr. Jones. Sir. Nah. He, God damn it. He raised, Let's sir. Conclude... <laughs> Let's conclude Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of the pawnbroking puzzle. Wow. He's amazing. Wow. Click. Clicky, clicky. Um, Mr. Sholmes. Okay. Well, Mr. Narodo, an impressively upbeat deduction for a detective wrench with loneliness. <laughs> Wouldn't you not agree? <laughs> <laughs> was was it true what you said about the bank over the road and what it has in its vault? Indeed. Though few know of its existence, it is one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. Then why did you just announce it to the entire room? Because it told me. In the strictest confidence. I feel like now this guy is going to go try and but rob the bank. you just announced it to everyone in this entire room. <laughs> Rather loudly, in fact. <laughs> and if it's such a big secret, how would Mr. Benedict have come to find out about it? There can be but one explanation for that. Clearly it's because the man is a criminal. The, this line was originally, that deduction was so hot, you'd hardly believe this detective was single and lonely. <laughs> <laughs> In the, translation. In the yeah. fan translation. I remember That's seeing that, I think. That's great. Yeah, there, there are some posts on the internet about like the differences between the translation and the official translation. Wasn't this um this Eggert Benedict named Benedict Cumberbatch in the fan translation uh, too? I think no. I was wrong, I but it was I think that was misinformation. Close. Oh, I see. Yeah, we talked about that last time. Yeah, the misinformation was me. Oh. I see. So you fucked up. Finger waggle. Yes. Oh, squint. <laughs> but what if he didn't know anything about the money in the vault? If he is a criminal, as you said, then buying a brand new shovel is sure to be the first thing he does now that you've revealed the secret. <laughs> oh. Or if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Windebank will. He already has plenty of shovels here, after all. Are we going to keep this as Wander? I think so, yeah. 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 All right. Oh, my life. I'm sure you're not so unscrupulous. Don't worry, Wander. They won't be a lot around very long. <laughs> hmm. Well, hopefully this has taught you a valuable lesson. Sensitive information must be handled with the utmost of care. One can never be sure that someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. And once the word is out, it's out. Perhaps I'll think twice about confiding in you next time, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, <laughs> never tell me. An <laughs> excellent idea, Mr. Naruto. An excellent idea. <laughs> Love this guy. Well then, Mr. Na Naruto. Uh, you know what to do, I'm sure. Yes. Let's listen to that great deduction again and see if we can massage it into shape. Hmm. Oh, very well then. Let us start once more from the beginning. Of Herlock Sholmes' magnificent logic and reasoning spectacular. Is he trying to eat as quickly as he can between lines? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I've already eaten all my food while you were having your deduction. Oh, good. We've already read this, so we can just... Oh, yeah, I guess we can just yeah. we can skip up to the first deduction, huh? Aha! <laughs> Eat your food, man. Eat it. Eat it fast. <laughs> 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 so, by Mr. Sholmes' reasoning, Mr. Benedict came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. Yes. In, a, in an attempt to tunnel into the sewers and gain access to the money in the vault of the bank across the road. But he wouldn't get very far with that broken shovel, shovel, would he? No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is, where? And what did Mr. Benedict hear at this... Mm, what? 
What did bring Mr. Benedict here at this particular point in time? What did bring? What did bring? What did bring? What did okay. bring? Okay, uh, I'm, I, can I just like look at it? Yeah, I just want to look at it. it. Certainly is a flyer for Mr. Windebank's shop. Let's see. Windebanks wants you. Pawn broker's assistant required. It's an eye-catching advertisement, that's for sure. I've seen the same flyer, flyer up here inside the shop, I think. Perhaps Mr. Windebank is always in need of more staff. So Mr. Benedict, Mr. Benedict came here to apply for a job. That's just too hard to believe. What on the backside of it? On the backside, oh, maybe, oh. Oh! Hey, that's Gina. No, no, that's a, do a doodle. Oh. It's our friend. Look at all the scribbled notes in the back of the flyer here. Hmm, I don't believe it. What is it? It's in English. Listen to what he's <gasps> he's absolutely allowing me to read right now. <laughs> Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5 foot 2. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue satchel, ragged. It's a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness. There's even a sketch of her hat and all. Although if he showed it to her, she'd fire that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. Mm -hmm. And look, the details of the shop have been written down here too. Windebank's Palm Brokery, Baker Street. Redemption deadline, 15th April. Which is today's date. Why would Mr. Benedict have all that information scrawled on the back of that piece of paper? Okay, well, I'm absolutely gonna make it that one. Yeah. Yeah, Take for that. sure. Hmm. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the info about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch in the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket Miss Lestrade and to Mr. Windebank's prom brokery here. Ah! <laughs> Nailed it! You originally told us that you had merely given chase after Miss Lestrade stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. Only thin. It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here today. By which I mean here to Windebank's pawn brokery, and today, the redemption oh. deadline of that overcoat. So you waited outside for the young girl Martin, who much in the description you had written down to arrive. Huh. And you have gone to some lengths to hide the reason for your pursuit of Mr. Straw. In other words, there was some interior motive to your actions. Then we're back to this part if you want me to read it or can I put more pizza in my mouth? Uh, I... Can you go a little bit longer? Because I think now sure. it'll be a little different. Oh. The cane which you unwittingly clutch in your person exhibits an un... In... No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, incontrovertible contradiction! Wow! <laughs> he sounded it out! <laughs> wow! What, what utter rot! Care. They I'm grow up years. so fast. Character <laughs> development, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He, yeah, he, that's the same. That, that's fine. That's fine. Um, what's a feral? It's the metal cap ca commonly found at the end of a cane, Mr. Nadehodo. Ah, uh, the bit that makes the nice clacking sound on the paper. Yes, exactly. And Mr. Sholmes is right. It appears to be missing on this cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil, and Mr. Sholmes identified the cane as suspicious. In other words, there is some secret about that cane that Mr. Benedict would rather we didn't know. Well, I mean, I'm gonna go over here. Oh, check out that alligator! That's scary! <laughs> Look here, Miss Suzato. There's some other, there's some letters on the handle. Alligator? Oh! Oh! Oh, he was just going to return the cane to the alligator. He just stuffs it in his mouth. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Watson. Ah, yes. Those must be initials, I think. In the West, it's customary for people to engrave their belongings with the first letters of their names. So her luck shows would be a chassis made. That's right. And the initials on this cane, obviously. Oh. A G? Why does it feel as though that's not quite right? Well, I mean, obviously. Uh, but do can we think of anybody that that, that fits? Uh, a gentleman. That, yes, that's probably it. Um, yeah, <laughs> let, let's just go with that. Take that. Take that, a sir. A gentleman. <laughs> yes. Yes. Augustus, gentleman. The contradiction of which I speak, of course, is of course the initialing. A most astute observation. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Egbert Benedict? We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are E.B. Yet, in a most possessive manner, you have in your grasp a cane bearing initials A.G. An incontrovertible contradiction indeed. Would you not agree? It was my great-grandfather's. On my wife's side. Mm. No, you're wrong. This cane isn't. You said before that you'd had that cane for years. I, I just got an explanation. <laughs> so don't try Please. to tell us that you just borrowed it from a friend or found it in the park. I got another one. <laughs> in short... Though you hold yourself to be a gentleman, <laughs> a gentleman, <laughs> you, <laughs> you have withheld your true name. Oh, what was that noise? Is that his jacket ripping? You recoil, sir. <laughs> Is something wrong? I, well, I. And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer to the next conundrum to present itself. This next slice of pizza. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, you're lying. It's but the it's same, the, isn't it? It is the same. It is. Is it the same? Behind the raw duba. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, here we go. Let's consider the bare bones of what's happened here. Miss Lestrade redeemed that fine-looking overcoat. And now a mysterious man has appeared, introducing himself with a fake name. Oh, we're just deciding that it's a fake name, okay. And claiming um, that the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he actually identified Miss Lestrade from her written description. Which suggests that everything else he's told us is untrue. So what we need to do here is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. Mm, okay. Uh, I heard a rip- Ah! It is a ripping sound! Ha-ha! Oh. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh! The seam on the shoulder there is coming apart, look! So it is. Do you know a moment ago, when Mr. Benedict was surprised by something that was said, I thought I heard him make a rather strange noise. It sounded a bit like a tiny growl. But- now I think that was probably the sound of this seam ripping open. If the jacket don't fit, you must have quit. Ah. If you look closely, it does seem to be a rather tight fit. The sleeves are stretched and bursting. Get out of here, Crockin. And Crockin. he wouldn't, wouldn't have a hope of fastening it at the front. If he were to run around it, I'm sure the whole thing would fall apart. Hmm. That I'd like to see. Sorry? Um? So, how can we make Mr. Benedict run around? She's really giving this some thought. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Take that! Hm. The split seam, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. Ah. <laughs> yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, the seam is already breaking apart. My suspicions were aroused from the offset. When you so badly lied about your name and so boldly waylaid this pocket pocket. 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 Ah! 
This catalog of untruths has all been for one very specific purpose. To steal the article that the young girl redeemed from Mr. Wendybank. Ah! Am I doing actual harm to you, sir? Yes. Yes. My ego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. But what really irks me is this. The <laughs> considerable crime I initially in imagined had been considerably curtailed. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, bud. <laughs> <laughs> to abscond with a redeemed item. Okay. Hey. Now is this all gonna be the same? Now, Mr. Bidget, let us continue. I think so, but we'll, we'll test the waters. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have been planning. Is that too much to be different? Fantastic. This is utterly absurd. You suggested I, a gentleman, I like my initials, to sign a wheeze to filch some tiredly article of pawnage. Have you forgotten that you redeemed the article in the proper manner using a watchword? <laughs> Had I not been the one to deposit it in the first place? How could I possibly have known the irrelevant details, n'est-ce pas? Oh, but the watchword can be discovered. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Oh? Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. Nessie pa? Nessie pa? Let us consider how one might learn of, of a secret watchword pertaining to the pawned property of another. The method is revealed by the council notice on the counter, which your oh. eyes inadvertently looked at. Oh. The direction of the deduction must change rather dramatically now, I think. Yes, no more talking of tunneling into the sewers, which is a pity because it all sounded rather exciting. <laughs> anyway. Damn it. It might actually, that could actually come back. I would believe that. <laughs> yeah. y y you can't deny that this mysterious gentleman did know that uh, the watchword. Yes, Professor. If you didn't know that word, Mr. Windebank would have never allowed you to redeem the article. Or, looking at it another way, if you did know that word, Mr. Windebank would allow you to redeem the article, whether it was yours or not. So, the question is, could this gentleman have found the watchword out somehow? Well, let's have a look around. Is this... The, yeah, doesn't I'm, he write down guessing, everything? Yeah, I'm guessing he writes it down because he's not going to remember all those. Look at this, Miss Suzato. Ah! It appears to be the uh, memo that Mr. Windebank has scribbled to himself. Let's see. What does it say? Oh, Professor. <laughs> Windebank, please! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it can't, it, it can't it be can't, that can't, obvious. It can't be that. No, right. certainly it can't right. be. Right, right Susanna? No, absolutely, no. No, that, no, that can't no. be. Mm -mm. Mr. Windebank must make a note of the watchwords his customers give him right before their eyes and an alarmingly clear script as well oh dear i i don't know where to look <laughs> who knows what other secrets i might see <laughs> hey buddy <laughs> take that <laughs> the method is revealed by the note lid on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn Yes, the broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. He asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on a notelet he has on hand. Then he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker. But his diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It is increasingly apparent that you were not present for, in the shop before your accusation against Mr. Mm -hmm. Strong. Were present. Oh, were, not was, was there, yes. 
In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to Ms. Mr. Windebank. When the diligent broker made the note, or made note of the watchword, as is his common practice, you observed him writing the word professor on the notelet beside the ledger. And that, sir, was the master plan you devised to steal the pawned article from the young Mr. Strahd. Hmm. Master plan? Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. We're going back to the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go to such a length to redeem a, a particular article from this pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill-fitting overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort, much less a worthless music box, box disc. Naturally, had a very good reason to make sure, or to make them yours, didn't you, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know. The articles we're talking about are the overcoat and the music box disc that was in one of the pockets. Which, according to Mr. Windebank, isn't even worth a penny. And yet this man went to such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if perhaps... We already have the evidence we need to explain it, Mr. Nadahodo. Could we really? I better have a thorough look through all the evidence we've collected so far. Uh, but it's... Is it this? Oh. It says it's for... Oh, yeah. <laughs> McGill did. Right. Is it... I guess it has to be an event. Take that. You see, this music box disc tells us all that we need to know. Such a hard puzzle. <laughs> What's uh, on the back? It reads, for Mr. McGilded. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Mr. Magnus McGilded. The unfortunate philanthropist who perished in curious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. A prominent man in London, through his loan mongering, uh, demonstrated a distinct lack of scruples. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Perhaps a subordinate? Mr. McGilded was a man of unusually small stature. In fact, he was precisely the right size for that overcoat that you've squeezed yourself into. Ugh. Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery, Mr. Egbert Benedict. But the final conclusion here is crystal clear. The reason you came to this pawnbroker today was to retrieve an article left behind by the late Magnus McGilded. What he said? Ta <laughs> to acquire an item deposited by Mr. McGilded. But then how did Gina have this information? Hmm. Is he still Ow. the correct owner? <laughs> Somehow? Is Gina related to McGilded? Hmm. Weren't they buddy buddy a at, the, bit. at the trial? Hmm. Well, well, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not him I expected to hear in these circumstances. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid there's something very troubling on my mind. Pray tell, Mr. Dato. Well, according to what Mr. Windebank told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. 
as I would be precisely two months since it was first deposited. Well, today is the 15th of April, so two months ago today... Would have been the 15th of February, sir, that's right. It's all carefully recorded in my ledger. Deposited at 10.30pm, I see. What? But but that suggests... Was that, like, after he I think it's after he died. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. 15th of February. It's precisely the day on which the omnibus murder took place. And half past ten in the evening... Is the implication that this was stolen off of the guy that he murdered in that omnibus? Oh. It's precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is merely beyond coincidence. Mm. So this would have been an alibi. You're of course at liberty to make whatever outlandish decisions you choose. However, but he admitted to being in the omnibus and people saw Ooh, him. Oh, God. that's a gun. I must insist you hand over the music box disc now. Uh. It would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. Uh, what do I do? Uh, there are, are there... so many witnesses here. Can you here. save him, Choose? Yes. <laughs> I'm, going, yeah. I'm going to save. <laughs> Quick nice bank. Say no. And then I'm going to say no, you can't. <laughs> there are some things a man or... must protect at all costs. I'm not sure that this is one of them, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> this may well be one of those things. Then again, <laughs> it may not. <laughs> oh, oh, gun. Mr. Mr. Oh, Winterbank. <laughs> Everyone's got a gun. This is my shop. I can't allow any harm to come to my customers if that were to happen. Windebank, no! Stop! I hope you didn't even Mr. Windebank, no! <laughs> uh, All right. I, I think that's one right, yeah. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! That's enough. What's all this then? Inspector Gregson! Pull out your gun. Help! Inspector! Pull out your gun. It's the Bobbies. Yes, right, sunshine. An arm was raised on one of our dedicated emergency lines. It was? So we got here as fast as we could. Now what's all this about then? What's all this then? Oh, praise be, you're here at last. I was moments away from forfeiting my own life in my very own establishment. You really? No, just aim it at the bad guy. <laughs> but there's only one bullet, what if we miss? <laughs> it's a small shop. <laughs> It would seem you have the upper hand. I guess you're going to jail now. What? I just possessed a gun. Right, you pointed you it at me. I've got some explaining to do. I don't appreciate being bothered with some petty argy bargy. Patty? Mr. Wunderbank very nearly met with his end. Yeah. Aimed by his own gun, as far as I can tell. Oh dear. And the whole Britain could have you with it saying if I don't get to the bottom of the case I'm supposed to be walking on. What? What on earth is the case, Inspector? Spare no detail, Grex. No. I, I might have said a little bit too much. <laughs> no matter. It's nothing to do with you a lot. Should have said that. That's Should have said that. Problem. Should have said that. <laughs> Anyway, sir, you're gonna have to come down with me down to the station. What have I done? Put your gun at me. And? <laughs> Waving a gun around in a private establishment? It's my gun. <laughs> <laughs> Go to jail. Do not collect $200. <laughs> but of course, Inspector. Whoa! Oh! He's getting away! Oh, that was happening. <laughs> Gregson. After all, lads, we're sure to beat Officer too. Sir! <laughs> I just spanned right out Whoa. of there. He did a spin and he was gone. <laughs> what happened? 
There's been a spate of thefts at pawn shops around here recently. So we fit the emergency buttons underneath the counters for brokers to let us know when there's trouble. That's great. Wow. Also, there's no door on the left side of the shop. That's but way more no... efficient than security cameras. <laughs> yeah. But there's like or... no door on the left side of the stage or the, the scene. What exactly did he do? I don't know. I spun around the officers. They Maybe were, and they were amazed by my promise and dance moves. Maybe through the curtain there's a second door. Maybe. Secret door. Oh, Inspector, I was very worried there for a while. Very worried indeed. Well then, mess you permanently in mourning. Also, do I still have? Yes, I still have it. Good. Oh, uh, yes. Oh. I'll be taking that uh, whatever it is in McGillan's down to the yard. Thank you very much. Uh, Hand it over. I guess that's fine. Oh, yes, of course. No, don't. Don't give it to him! It's mine, that is mine! He shepherd inch. Sorry, miss. Anything belonging to the McGill did has to be taken in as evidence now. Is it evidence? If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. Hmm. It's all yours, Inspector. Uh, I can shoot eight if you want. <laughs> Gina's no good, very bad day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so we handed we handed Mr. McGilded's disc over to Inspector Gregson, and were similar, summarily turfed out of the shop and onto the street. Well, at least the other guy All didn't right, get it. Out you go. Go on, get. To to be continued. Be continued. To be continued and all that. What is well, going on? Well, one. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> See you guys next week. No. No. <laughs> I don't know if I expected uh, a McGilded case to be relevant again. Uh, yeah. yeah. I kind of thought it was there done. There was a little lingering thing about it at the end there. I don't think that I expected gun. <laughs> gun? <laughs> oh, you still got the coat, though. See? Oh, yeah. That's why I ate grown-ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Shouldn't the coat have also gone to the police? Aren't we assuming that that also belonged to Mr. McGillard? Mm. But we don't have proof that it's Mr. McGillard's. Oh, really, Mr. Strahd? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh, but... my. Surely you were given that. <laughs> oh. Just turns into her. Yeah, the D let me keep it. After I looked daggers at him for long enough. He went through the pockets and said, Go on then, have it before telling me to scamp him. Scarper? I think he said Scarper. Hang on, Hang on let's have a look. Oh, scamper. that's not right. Scamper? Let's... Scamper. Scarper. Oh, it does say Scarper. Scarper. Huh. What the oh. fuck is a Scarper? Hang Maybe. on. And the accent? I don't think an a the accent tank turns M's into R's. Run away. It just yeah. means run away. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Effectively, scamper. Mm -hmm. Always pays off. Giving people a look like you ate them. I can't help. Oh, wow. This is a cockney slang I've never heard before. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. from Scop of Flow. Rhyme is with go. Scop <laughs> <laughs> of Show? I can't help feeling that it's going to get you into serious trouble one day. Scop of Flow is a place in Scotland. Oh. Oh. God. Well, I really want, want to. Was that nice shiny disc mine? The music box disc. But Mr. Windebank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna have another bash. Give him a long, hard stare. I think not, Mr. Straw. We shan't ever or enter Mr. Windebank's again today. Why not? That's not fair! It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windebank. But that disc's mine! I had the ticket for this coat and it was in the coat's pocket. And there should be something else in all. That's what I, that rotten coat said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? Well then, that's mine too, whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. 
Mr. Strahd, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Sholmes. So what are your plans now? Will you oh. dine with us this evening? She's so mad at us, and he just invites her to dinner. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I shall be delighted to cook, I'm sure. And I might entertain you with a modest violin recital. Now that I have it back. Oh. <laughs> nice. Come on, Fred. Ah! No, ta. Oh. Why would I come round your place, eh? Have you lost your head or something? Oh, okay, bye. I can assure you nothing is bolted down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. She's gone. Hmm. Having revealed. Revealed. Revealed on me. Quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering if perhaps she might turn up anyway. Aw. Oh. Interesting. Once she's had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Hmm. Very well, then. I'll inform Iris to set a plate for our potential guest at the dinner table this evening. Um, oh, wait, no, that shows. And one more thing. I should be glad of your company later, too. Sorry? I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. That's my death flag. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, how exciting! What is it? For some reason, I'm not too worried about Sholmes dying. Yeah, what? yeah. Until the final chapter. <laughs> you shall have to wait to see, Mr. Sato. Until then, later. Yes. Hey, Chad, is this the final chapter of this game? I don't know. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Uh, I... Do we not want to know that? Um, well, if you check the sele chapter selection screen, yes. Oh, okay. oh this is Great. the last it chapter. Is? Yeah, yeah, this is the last chapter of this game. Wow. Makes sense. I, I yeah, just Yeah, when wasn't... you picked this chapter, it was just before the next game, so. Ah, I see. Look at all the different things in the window of this shop. Ah, oh, that's Miss that's Wonderbanks, the pawnbrokery. I hope we get to visit there someday. He looks much smarter than a- I sure would love to visit Mr. Windebank's pawnbroker. <laughs> <laughs> it looks much smarter than a pawnbroker's in Japan, doesn't it? Well, I stepped away, but I was going to say, this was originally last chapter until the extra one they added with all the touch controls. Oh, yeah. that's right. There's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I thought this stuff. was the one with, like, 3D slider, where you, like- Oh, it is! Cross You're your right. eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're right. I find pawn shops at home rather inapproachable, personally. It reminds me of tearfully parting with my favorite fountain pen. I felt so miserable. Oh. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger, Mr. Naruhodo. Aw. But the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Not this sword, though. This sword is very powerful. Um, <laughs> this, uh, this whole screen, and this is the only thing that I can that expect? Is the only thing. <laughs> what about the other side? Well, we live right next to it! Okay. <laughs> you thought when they said across the street you meant on the other side of the road? No! No, no I didn't. I just thought that we were a few roads down or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's already been two months since we started taking lodgings here above Mr. Sholmes' office. Oh. Oh, wait. wait. Never mind. I still can't believe, uh, quite believe it. I never expected things would turn out like this. Hush, man. Oh, I know! To actually be sharing accommodation, accommodation with the world's greatest detective. If I ever find someone before a court of law now, I'll have, I'll, I will have not one regret. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'd be happy to defend you, of course. <laughs> um, Why does this situation seem familiar somehow? Yeah, yeah. There's two screens and only one, two things to look at. Are you serious? That's the whole thing. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, that's, can't even that's... look at that clothes shop there. Uh, I mean, I just tried. I'll. Th you're talking about this, yes? Yeah. 
No, nope. It's, it, no, it's not lit up like this. It's just, yep. Two right. things. Grand You're losing your touch, things. Ace Attorney. Um, Naruto mm, Legal Consultancy. You know, let's visit home real quick. See if anything new is going on. You want to talk? Nah. Uh, this is, well, I don't want to fuck it. Do, do you it. want me to give you a hint? A little bit. <laughs> Can it really be that we've been in Great Britain for two months already? Yes, it's gone by in a flash, hasn't it? And what an English gentleman you... You trailed off there, suzoto son. I'm so sorry. When I thought it through, I realized it's not true at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I simply don't feel that any Britishness has really rubbed off on you. Nor you, to be honest. <laughs> Well, that's obviously because... Yes, I know. Without a doubt, it's your kimono. It most certainly stands out. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong! <laughs> I do adore that, that... I do adore the attire of English ladies. It's quite delightful. But somehow... I just don't feel ready to abandon my Japanese dress just yet. I wonder how Suzato-san would look in Western clothes. Maybe we'll get use the DLC outfits in the next game. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's it. That's, that's all. All right, just wanted to check that out. Let's go back to Shonsu's place. It's April. April. Oh, Susie and Bruno, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for the breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. Busy as always? I am. I prepared for dinner for this evening. Already? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh, yes. After all, we, uh, we have a special guest joining us. Maybe. Oh. I guess who it is. Go on. <laughs> You'll never guess! Uh... Look at those little eyes of her shining. Oh dear, it is awkward when you already know the answer, <laughs> isn't it? It's Ginny! Isn't that exciting? Quick, Ryunosuke, act surprise! Oh, oh wow! Oh, what a surprise! I didn't know that. that is oh, wonderful news! That's great! Wow, Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. Ginevra? <laughs> I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional! Oh yes, that does sound like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Uh, are you, or are you, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, by the way, Miss uh, Iris, what's uh, Mr. Shom's up to? Just gonna skate on by that one. <laughs> Iris, Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Oh. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry? Uh oh I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. What? As you can see, I'm not here. I, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I see. Just like that phone alarm. <laughs> really, he behaves like a child sometimes, Hurley does. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of a parent and child relationship, don't they? Yes, except that Iris is cl clearly the parent here. Come to think of it, I wonder where her real parents are. Are we gonna talk about it? Mm. What's the bad there, Rudo? You have a very funny look on your face. Oh, no, it's nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mrs. Sholmes, you are wondering? Am I right? How? How did you? <laughs> oh, Rudo, I can read you like a book. Eh, this girl is dangerous. <laughs> Don't worry. You can ask me anything. I won't mind. Are we finally going to reveal the big thing? Let's do it. Let's get into right. it. 
So, by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two months ago, right? Yes, who also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. She'll Although, do that. After that trial, I invited her back in here and we had dinner together. And now we're best of friends. Oh, <laughs> what a lovely tale. Yes, now if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Mm. Oh. And I cheated down to, to the back alleys. What good fun. Ha 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 ha. I've had a <laughs> good fun. Before. Interesting idea <laughs> of friendship. And huh? then I'd like to have the latest color of smoke that I've developed. There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Jenny wants to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. I got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. Poor Hurley. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Jenny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. It would be a shame if she didn't. It would. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've been wondering why I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind that and where are your real parents? Oh. When mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Mommy passed away when I was born. And at around the same time, my father, well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of his cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. oh wait a minute. Did you say he and Hurley? Uh-oh. Yes! Daddy and Hurley were always solving mysterious cases together. She didn't mention that before. So are we looking back to the guy who died in the first case? Uh, we'll see if they mm. figure it out, huh? <laughs> he wrote them all up in his diaries. That's what's in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true? And Mr. Sholmes? Well, they did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases. Oh, yes. I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So Mr. Shom's partner was your father? Exactly. Hurley told me I wasn't allowed to look into the chests. But that only made me want to look even more. So I opened it up. Oh. And you found your father's memoirs? Yes. So I asked Hurley, Who wrote these? He nearly fell off his chair. You know the animation. <laughs> but then he told me, that's when I found out the author of all those accounts was my father. So Iris's father was Mr. Sholmes' partner. I have practically lived with Hurley my, all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So, it came as quite a shock when Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. He must have done. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you. He didn't at such a young age. Hurley says it because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. That's fair. Huh? Yeah, he figured it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's bad at secrets. That too, we, as we know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they even open their mouth sometimes. Right. Anyway, I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's diaries. That's what inspired me to write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I'd 
always assumed Mr. Shome simply simply told you all those thrilling stories. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> oh no, who is hopeless like that? He forgets everything. As soon as he solves the case, it all but vanishes from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It was quite a shock for everyone. You can say that again. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? Are, is this it? That's right, Wilson. That is Dr. John H. Wilson. Reinoscape, please. Come on. I learned from his diaries that he is a doctor of medicine, you see. And so very do you <laughs> never figure it out? That's what prompted me to study and study so that I could earn a doctorate as well. Iris' father, who went to some distant land and is a doctor mm -hmm. by the name of John H. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Come no, on. Come on. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> uh, this was Lunar. Oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> 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 The court will now hear the trial of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. <laughs> Kindly best... state before the court the name of the victim in this case. Is that the best use of voice mod we've had in so long? <laughs> Maybe. <Yes. laughs> the victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson! Jonathan Honathan Wanathan. That's right. I'm only just now remembering, visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University, and the man who, in the most bizarre of circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Miss Suzato? Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. But she's gonna figure it out. We just had a conversation about that. Oh. <laughs> ah, my dear fellows, how good to see you! Ah, uh, Mr. Mr. Sholmes. Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? Uh... Well, no matter now. So how the devil are you? We've been with you for most of the day. <laughs> Goodness, really? Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm? My violin? Whatever are you talking about, my dear madam? Oh, um... I play the clarinet. <laughs> oh, never mind that now. There's something far more interesting to show you. Are there two of me? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Could my there be two Shomses? Huh? I thought oh my one god, was what if that's actually the twist? What if <laughs> one Shomes didn't realize that the case from the day before had been solved and that's why? <laughs> Cripes. <Ooh>. I, <laughs> I think it's just him being eccentric, but that, that would be amazing. It's my evil doppelganger, Sherlock Holmes! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Who does cocaine? Oh, another music box disc. There goes the age rating. <laughs> oh, no, that's another disc, Mr. Suzano. This is the one Greg demanded me hand over as evidence. Mr. McGilded's disc. Wait, why do you have that? Oh, my. Oh. Then, then, what's it doing here? <laughs> You know what times, Mr. Naruto. I think though I had an undeniable turn in for detection. I may well be more adept at larcenry. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'm your pickpocket assistant. And Rudo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. Right. Plus, Suti has such beautiful handwriting. She can write all our menacing crime notifications. <laughs> 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 
Oh, 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 I didn't expect him to go along with that. Yes, <laughs> I'd be delighted. I'm just going to pretend this conversation never happened, I think. Rinosuke, you were so for it! I crimes, Mr. Narihodo! You know oh, what? I've had a turn things. of thought, and I want to as well. This is great. <laughs> we'll make more money this way. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let's well, just talk. Phoenix was vocal about his la n non need for crime. These guys have no <laughs> inhibition. <laughs> I, I don't understand. How did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought we, uh, Inspector Gregson talk it took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is especially why I had, I always carry some of these. Did you bribe him? That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Shams. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> if you will humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is, Mr. McGill did, down to the yard. Thank you very much. So I hand it over. Oh, yes, of course. If the police demands on the US evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yes you did, but I still don't understand. It was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars like this. Oh my god, did you did you oh. smelt a new one from that? Are you serious? Amazing. <laughs> Why do you think he didn't care about you guys when That's he was amazing? <laughs> the disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made an image in the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. <laughs> For precisely this situation. <laughs> As you do. It's going to be soft for making impressions, but resistant enough to form merity. The result is a precisely controlled solution. Oh you my god, it is for this. It is for this situation. It does not melt when you poured hot metal onto it. What is it made of? <laughs> what? Caramel. Is this safe for consumption? No! Yeah, caramel. <laughs> How extraordinary! I don't think he poured the mold, like the... Poured oh, the metal I guess into he could that. have made a mold out of the caramel. Yeah. Again. Wouldn't you also need to make... To pour that, though? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe not. There's a probably process Probably something to that it. didn't need to be hot to be... Maybe. Maybe. The advantage of the caramel is that it's discreet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once he has the impression, he can go home and take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying a pair of these at once, oh, prices frequently, provides a very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press in its unique form is duplicated. This is a neat trick. <laughs> I can enter one's property at will, and never without time. High sucrose nourishment. Yes, <laughs> it sounds legal. Very legal indeed. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong legal. From the image, I was able to create this. I confess I was most curious about how to handle the matter of the music without issue of the disc when played. Uh, okay. All right, let's, let's, let's listen. Blech. Let's hear it. I am curious. Do tell us then, Mr. Sholmes. What music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea? None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellows? No, I'm afraid not. 
goodness. You don't know, Reno. Are you ready? Oh, boy. Inside a music box, there's a special piece of metal called a comb. That's what produces the sound. Small pr <laughs> protuberances. Good job. Thank you. Plug the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making it the different notes. The first music box to be invented used a rotating cylinder with a portrait uh, on it. Mm. Oh, the first time. Protuberances. Protuberance. Protuberance. The word. The word. Words are hard. Word! Whose idea was Much words? over time. Right. Every time a new type of player was produced, which used this such as these. With that development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide around the globe. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and it can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are many we're many films in Europe now. Manufacturing of firms. There are music boxes as a result. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music, even when no performer is present. But it is this very success of that invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one's firm, one firm's music box, does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing to which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. There's no way to find this information out. Other uh, than trial and error? I Google. see. So, that's why... Naturally, I tested the disc in the few music boxes I have at my disposal. And oh. yet, none of them. Oh? Not to what? But as you can hear, to no avail. <laughs> <laughs> the result was equally unsatisfactory in, in this one. So, I am presently i presently engaged in acquiring an example of all the music boxes ever made in Europe. Wow. Uh, every Friend. single one? This is the only Friend. sensible plan. That's probably for you. Always takes things a little bit too far. But my dear girl, an unsolved riddle is quite repugnant in my constitution. So I remember that there was a music box in the pawn shop. What, what are the odds? <laughs> What, what are the yeah. odds, right? It's gotta be. What are the it's odds? Gotta be. What are the odds? No way, it's not. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of, of music boxes, won't it? I think I said that right, maybe? Close enough. Hmm, yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case, I shall just have to ask you to vacate the attic <laughs> room. What? <laughs> but. But we lived there. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> Shit. Magnus McGilton. Not that I'm expected to hear again so soon. Yes, it's only been two months since that grisly case. Mr. McGilded perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. I, I posited the theory last time that maybe he faked his death here. I wonder how possible that is. Hmm. I love the total change. <laughs> the music and all that suddenly going on from the music box conversation. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows, still now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGillard's innocence in the trial. The newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. I think I prefer that.
the murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that night. And although Mr. McGilded was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. Dick. It would appear that the case is not yet closed. Seems like it. Well, it's time I start getting things ready for dinner, I think. Let's shoot it! Yeah. <laughs> Ginny will be here before long. She needs to loaded. dinner. It's loaded with spices. <laughs> <laughs> she shoots it. It's the dinner gun. She shoots it and the smoke clears and it just looks beautiful, like picture perfect. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. It hasn't been cooked yet, though. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. Hmm. Yes, you may be right. Oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Winderbank said before. He said that he had a manuscript of Iris's in pawn. A, a manuscript of Iris's in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sholmes' latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, were his words, I believe. So uh, you heard about that, did you? I expect you were uh, as incensed as I was. Oh, yes! The idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Winderbank's storeroom, gathering dust. My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawnbroker storeroom is the safest place for it. It's more secure than a bank's vault. For two the man's minutes. insane! What about your Stardivarius? Stardivarius. What about your Stardivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Technically, yes. He just take, took out the wrong thing. Yeah. Well, that may be the occasional mix-up. Caused by a certain impetuous someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that back Baker, uh, Baskerville story, Harley? You gave her the Hound of Baskerville tale? <laughs> what? Or gave them that? Ba ah! <laughs> oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of Baskervilles. I should love to read it. <gasps> Were we not supposed to know that? Ah! Uh. Wait. What's, go what's going on here? She didn't say a hound. Are we not supposed to know it was hound? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Susie? What did you just say? Um... You said, the Hound of the Baskervilles. But, how could you know the full title? Well, that's... That's because Miss Susato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. But you know, The Hound of the Baskervilles has never been published. Hmm? When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. That's why he said he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windebanks? And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, 
What's going on? Ah! Hmm? What is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. Saved by the bell. <laughs> Miss Lestrade! Please turn on some music. This was a bad idea. I knew I weren't welcome. I'm going. Hey. Hey. No, wait! Miss Lestrade! We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? You two are really upset. Oh, yes! Just wait there, Giddy! We'll have everything ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie! Right, of course. It's... By the way, Susie, no longer loaded with spices. Oh. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss, Lest Miss Lestrade. Uh, please, make yourself at home. Don't stand in the door, my dear girl. Come on in. I'm trying to figure out the word. <laughs> Understandable. Mendelssohn. Okay. What What say you to some Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. Or oh, Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn it is, then. <laughs> Cat! Cats! Kitty! Kitty, kitty! Meow! Oh, cat. No! No! Thank you, Macy. That darn cat! That evening. I can't believe. Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sh Mr. Sholmes' violin performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. That, that sounds like fun! <laughs> that sounds fun! Even everyone funny, was. Dick. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Friend! Yay! Friendship. Now about the Baskervilles. April. Don't worry about it. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Iris's cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting uh, strains of Mr. Mm -hmm. Bosholm's violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face the next time we're in court. Do it. Don't. Do it. You dare me. Do it. I do. <laughs> I dare you. Madhavada-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? Is this going to be about the telegram? What's the matter, Suzada-san? It's about the telegram I received. Ah. The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart asked to see me. Can I come with you because I'm suspicious? The Lord Chief Justice? When? Are you saying that you're squinting? I am? I actually did squint, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow morning. What? Then we have to start preparing at once. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Not about us, No, if I don't go with you, you are going to be kidnapped at best. Please, let me go. <laughs> Please. At best. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? Hmm. I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. What's all this about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. I'm, I, I would go and at least like hang outside the door. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, who could that be, I wonder? Hi. Good evening, friends. Ah, uh, Iris, hello again. And Gina too. Sleepover? Say hello to Lunar Hour. <laughs> it's Lunar Hour! <laughs> yes! Ginny's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? 
Slumber party! Well, yeah. How lovely! Let me make a pot of tea. This is great. I love this. Girls' night! You know, I learned so much today! Rio knows they can come too. Oh, what in particular? How to steal! <laughs> How to do crime! Actually, yes. <laughs> yes! <laughs> all those things Jenny showed us! Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques. We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I hope that this comes back, like we all just kind of like have things that we shouldn't in, in particular <laughs> moments in the future. Just in the middle of the trial, you have an additional ev or a piece of evidence you weren't supposed to have. <laughs> it never even notifies you that you have this piece of evidence. You just look into your menu and then all of a sudden it's there and you don't know where you got it. <laughs> I think I'm awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see, I came to return this. Are you still Wait, like what? It? You! <laughs> could, could we check your items? Please. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, maybe it wasn't fair, there. A, but... Maybe it wasn't there a few lines ago. <laughs> maybe. Hey, that's mine. Oh, my. How did you... However, did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I'd forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Uh, well, thank you. Am I ready to hear your backstory? Mm. Apparently not. Nope. Oh. <laughs> All right then. Good night. You gotta pass a few more character flags first. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good night. Like Windy Banks's. Yeah, you were absent. You had to come with us. <laughs> hmm. So this. Oh. So this is your office, is it? Hmm. Yeah, it's my office. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> but I told you my tragic backstory. <laughs> I think I wouldn't fancy me a chance with a, w a lawyer. What would? What lives in a place like this? Excuse me? Yes, me too! <laughs> it seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. Is it the story again? Who gave me that idea? I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Okay, well, well tell, tell her. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time. Please. What? Why? Did she steal it from Winnebank and is currently reading it? Oh, maybe. Alright. Uh. I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh, no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what all this is about, this is about really, but... The story you made up, is it, Iris? This mantle script, or whatever you call it. Not exactly some, a story I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddies. That's right. I don't suppose I mentioned it to you before, Ginny, but... My daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Uh? They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is, is that right, mister? Uh, apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I started them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So, where's your old man? Where's your old man now, then? He 
have to go away on an urgent business to a faraway land. And he'll be gone for a very long time. Mm. So, I've never really met him. Do you think Shomes knows? I don't, I don't know. Mm. Oh, right. Come to think of it, I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. Backstory time. You have now unlocked the character flags. Backstory time. Uh, after this, probably. After this. Iris, this hound of the Baskervilles story. Is it Baskerville or Baskervilles? Does anybody know? Uh, Baskervilles. I, I know it says that, but. Oh. Is the S silent? I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you pronounce the S because it's not French. Okay. I take, it, I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. S is pronounced? Okay. That's right. I, I thought it was fascinating. But it's different It's somehow. pronounced rules. <laughs> <laughs> From the other cases, I mean. Oh? How? I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written and showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. It pains us to see this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at the start. Under any circumstances. Is this gonna be this times DL6 or something? Mm. <laughs> I hate how that's the a sense incident. Sense. <laughs> the Baskerville's incident. Honestly, I would love that. That'd be so cool. <laughs> but why not? It's one of my best works. It is. I'm not in the mood to say. Not now. So please don't ask me. Hmm. All right, then. I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will spend everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windebank, isn't it? But he only holds things for two months. Yes. I think they can, like, renew it. Oh, yeah, they did mention that. Yeah, essentially, yeah, they just pay the rent and then they leave it there. Mm. Hurley said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. I am a child. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. If he said it wasn't, he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so too. You lot are too, too trusting for your own good. But he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Shomes is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. Nah. What? Hurlis lying to me? No. Don't be like that, Gina. Come on. Uh, examine. Yeah. Hi. No, she did. Oh, don't you look cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me your backstory. I've realized that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. Oh. Where did you come from? Stork. Uh, <laughs> stork. <laughs> Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us. From the minute we're born. Not even our mums. But, we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah, diving's my life. 
I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift someone's some pompous idiot's purse. I get that. And that's how we all afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, ain't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What it be like to have parents, I mean. I always thought I'd make everything right. But I haven't listened to what Iris just said. Sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Oh! I mean, if you know, or if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them. It's true. I do want to see Daddy so much. Oh dear. Oh, Iris. Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Well, he reckons he popped that mantle script or whatever, right? But come on! That's obviously a load of rubbish! Oh my, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If that story really... Or if that story was really an old Windabank storeroom... There's no way someone from half, half a way around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. <laughs> uh, sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. No. Without telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Barefaced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't released it yet. Or you just ain't realized it yet. <laughs> and you haven't re released the story yet. Also that. I'm telling you, that mantle script ain't at Windabanks. You'll soon see if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. That Sholmes is a liar like the rest of them. I'm honest. I have wondered if Earl is telling me the truth sometimes. See. Oh, but I don't mean that like I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh my goodness, look at the time! Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Gina. You must me let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist! Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, then. Iris, it sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult, but deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night, too, Naruto-san. Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris's father, but also the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Hmm. Background noise. Background noise. Hodo. Mr. Nado Hodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. Oh. oh. <laughs> Did you like my impression? <laughs> this is very good. 
What's going on in the middle of the night? It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris's room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She's probably decided to go home, no? No. I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfast with Miss Suzato. No, I don't believe the girl has gone home. But I've been waiting for her for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you will indulge me, look out the window, my dear fellow. Okay. What's this about? Oh. How can I see that from the window? And why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windebank's pawn brokery. Mr. Windebank's? Oh no. It's simple. That story was really an old Windebank's storeroom. There's no way someone from half around the way that or half a There's no way someone from half a way around the world, in other words, you could know about it. Sorry, Iris. But if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you? Could you not have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Miss Naruto. Sorry? Oh, no. No, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. Uh, Suzato? At once! Yep. Miss nope. Suzato. Okay, yeah, let's go. It's April. Got quiet. April. The door to Mr. Windebanks is open. Is Windebank gonna be dead here? <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to defend Gina, yeah. maybe? Uh... Oh, no. And the lamp is still burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's something more sinister. What? Come, is that a moment to lose? Clearly something of his fortune inside. There's no one here. Uh-oh. Oh yes. There is. Oh! 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 Ah! Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! Did he just get shot? What the? Oh. Has Sholmes been shot? Leave him, Mr. Roto. But... After them, go! Right! Get out of here. Blast! I've lost them! Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I believe that's Wander again. Hello, hello, what are you doing? Oh, oh well, well it's nice. just a Bobby. Bobby can also just be there. <laughs> okay, I haven't had a voice in a while. The arm was just raised from his bomb broker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? What? With the police well, well, what's the all this then? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windebanks. Don't you dare be dead. That first line was pretty ominous. No. What is it? No is way. It Absolutely not. Mr. Jones! Mr. Narado! It's just, he's wounded. How bad is it? That, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. Uh, in the storeroom. Uh, hurry! Uh, 
No! No! Oh. I'm gonna see what happen! No! Is that Gina? Oh no! Uh, it's Gina! Oh no! Also, Wendy Banks, Narahodo. Ding yeah. dong, bing bong, to be continued. <laughs> yeah, but Gina! <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Well, yeah. good stream, everyone. See you guys next time. No, yeah. shut up. <laughs> what are we streaming tomorrow? Shut up. Moving on. <laughs> For the record, uh, tomorrow is Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bang! Yep, we read all this. Mm -hmm. Behind that door in the storeroom. Oh no, that was. That was no. Yeah, that was still uh, Sholmes. Kitty door? Oh, that's a thought. Oh. It's Gina? With a gun. a gun. From that moment, Windebank's pawnbrokery became a crime scene. Everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn. Bef it was just before dawn before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. The oh, oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that is not right. Um, what? I'm guessing it's been flipped. Uh, <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Hang on a minute. It, Hang on a minute. Incredible. Give me an easy fix. Is that something that I did? Transform. Transform? Where? Yeah. Uh, there. Transform. Uh, flip, flip, port, flip vertical. Regardless, vertical. Thank you very much, Gomez. For yeah, yeah for gifting a sub to someone. <laughs> Wait, it might and be. If someone could sub again, you could help us test it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would say it wouldn't it be vertical because it flips in the middle vertically. Then I don't know. So I don't know. Now you need to. I always get confused on that one. Uh, it it should well, just it say hot dog style. Or, it should well, just say hot dog style or hamburger style. <laughs> Honestly, Appreciate yes. It. Okay. Or pizzas or French fries. Okay. It was just before then that. Yes, 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 yes. Still April. Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was wait at home. Oh, yes. We asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. When I woke up. Oh, thank, thank you, Dragoni, for thank you. helping us fix that. Oh, we appreciate it. Me. Appreciate it. When I woke up, I was all alone. Hurley and Ginny were gone. Oh, Every thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, no, guys, so let's get it. Let's get so it. It's okay. You can stop. Test for the future. If we flip the browser source, we can force people to subscribe more. <laughs> yes, that's right. Stunks. Thank Stunks. you. Thank you. That's a joke. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Everyone was gone. What happened, Bruno? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Uh, yeah, let's talk. Oh, get that out of the way. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windebank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early, mor er early hours of the morning. Oh, yes. I had a feeling. You did? When I saw all those police carriages I was pulling out up outside his shop, I knew something must have happened there. Mm. When we entered Windebanks in the small hours, we dis disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out onto the street and I chased after them, but they got away. So was one of them who shot old Windebank, Mr. Windebank, I suppose? I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh? Why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. Ginny! But 
boy! Well, the thing is... No! Ginny wouldn't do something like that! I know, I know! None of us think she did it. Then why have they arrested her? I'm sorry, There's there was nothing I could do. So much to talk about. This first. Where's Hurley, then? Is he still there investigating the scene? He really ought to have come for, uh, have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. Ugh. I don't want you uh -oh. to worry. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some news about Mr. Sholmes. He was taken to hospital this morning. What? Well, um, when we entered Windebanks, a gun was fired and... He took the bullet. This is Iris's no bad, no, no fun day. Yeah. <laughs> Hurley was shot. No, no. It, it's all right. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He's he's at Saint Sin Saint Sinners. Oh God. There's <laughs> ten. They're tending to him there. Maybe it's at least. Sinners. At least it wasn't, uh, Hottie cl Hottie's clinic. <laughs> it's oh, true. Wow. Hmm. I was Hottie. <laughs> Suddenly <with two> you... <laughs> what is it, Lunar? I have my own worries. Nothing. <laughs> Carry on. I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. To... to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. Oh. There's more. So much. <laughs> it was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windebank's shop. Everything happened so much. They shot Mr. Sholmes when we disturbed them, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I, I just froze. After them! Go! After that, I ran out into the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I, I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It, it's my fault. I let them get away. I think... That's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them, you might have been shot as well, Bruno. Oh. On top of everything else, I... I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Oh. Oh, she, she, did she still went off to go talk to, um, Storm, Strongheart? Where's Susie, Bruno? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. They questioned her, but not me. Why aren't you in there then? Maybe what? you've already been questioned. Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Miss Suzato stayed behind at the scene to tend to Mr. Sholmes, so they didn't get started until later. Ah, I see. Besides, one of us had to come back to be with Iris. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving early. You should let me know, and I would have come to the station. That actually probably would have been good. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were on the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all... They shot her in the dead, didn't they? No! I I, I mean, Miss Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Ah, uh, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windebank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. And the storeroom door was locked from the inside. 
Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Yes. It's a locked room mystery. Let's go over all the oh. types of locked room mysteries first. <laughs> Play the sound effect, Jay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't alone in there. Gina was found next to him on the floor as well. Oh no. Except that this is the shittiest locked room mystery ever. It has a window flap that opens. <laughs> and according to the detectives who investigated afterwards, don't tell me there was no one else in the room. Yes, exactly. How'd you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well, but what can I say? I'm damned if I agree, damned if I don't. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. There's not much I can do at the moment but I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, Uno. Mm. I'm gonna be your sidekick now. Okay. I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I'm not sure how I feel about taking a 10-year-old child to the scene of a murder, but I don't want to leave her all alone here either. All right then, Pearls. I mean, Iris. Perhaps you can be <laughs> help me? Yes, I'd love to. Jean is at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. Ah, I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Well, thank you for that guidance game. I'll do that first. New location. Great. Uh... Uh... Oh, there it is. There it is. the hospital. Hey, Runa, do you have a special someone? Uh, Ooh. April. <laughs> <laughs> Who's April? Who's April? <laughs> <laughs> April May? Holy. <laughs> oh. Huh? He's not here. No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Is he already up and at him? Oh, I know what's probably happened. Hurley was being a big baby, and the bullet wood wasn't that bad, so he's been sent home. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Baby or not, there's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Sholmes suffered. You're not making this better. Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, I know, what I have Every character we don't know what it is for a while is going to be Bobby. Okay. <laughs> no, Bobby. Hi, Robert. Fish water's all fly, bitch. No visit in. So what Every... are you doing in AA? Well, I'll have you know, we're Hurley's next of kin. Uh, uh, well, begging your bottom lane, ma'am, sir. A little lady and a gorgeous Eastern gentleman. The great mystery solver is a mysterious family, eh? Yeah, if that's how you see us, some um, short. Where is he, Constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he's currently in the operating theater, ma'am. Undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since they went in. Oh dear. Is he going to be all right? Well, it doesn't appear to be walking, you see. Yenisphenic, that is. Oh, God. Oh! I've heard a report that the gentleman claims he may have had a little bit too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. Are you serious? Coffee. Could, would that even... Coffee. Was he drinking coffee to, <laughs> to keep him awake? From uh, I, I think this is the game saying coffee. Oh, oh yes. coffee. Opium. I don't know. My thought process was that he was drinking coffee to keep awake. Well, but also that. You know. Why would coffee? Jay. Oh well, I said it's. Oh. Yeah, no. Anyway, yeah, I think it will be. <laughs> anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Well, thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. 
Poor Hurley. That sucks. Let's but write bed notes. Okay. <laughs> no, I can't. Why no. can't you? You're useless no. right now. <laughs> hey! There's a notice board on the wall <laughs> here. Look. Let's see. What does it say? Thought of the day. On seeing any vermin, calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh, yes. They have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. That sounds good. If you don't deal with them, there's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? The medicine? Oh, I see. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Sholmes' sake. And oh. steak. And steak. <laughs> Got a pretty good steak, steak in this. Few items. Nope, Cheap wrong. Steak. Wrong. Incorrect. <laughs> Over this way. Right. There we go. Phoenix? I wonder what these are. Do you have, <laughs> do you have any idea, Iris? Oh, have you ever seen crutches before? Let me explain. They're for people with leg injuries to help them walk. You hold one under your each arm, you see. Uh-oh, right. I thought they were weapons of some sort. Why would there be weapons that are in a hospital? I thought maybe a fighter had been injured in a battle contest and has been brought here along with his weapons. <laughs> That's <laughs> surprisingly plausible. <laughs> Two things. Okay. Not a lot to look wow. at in this case. All right, let's go to the prison. Hurley's been shot, Rudo. Yeah, but there's nothing to look at. <laughs> there's no corpse here yet. Yeah, my do you mean yet? Oh my god. Uh, nothing, nothing. Hi, Gina. Hello, Gina. They let you keep that? <laughs> I might not I have known. It. I love I'm just as confused minutes. as you are, but I'm gonna make use of it. <laughs> it's not dangerous. It's long enough for you to ponder, like, wait, they let you have it before the animation is even <laughs> half done. <laughs> oh, you still have the grenade launcher hurling like you made! I wish you wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Ginny. I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry? You were, and get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. With bullets. You think you know me? Pull yes. the other one. Oh. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I punch people's purses while they're walking around on the street. That's how I get by. You punch people's purses? I know what I said. <laughs> oh, and if my I purse. saw any chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop on any day of the week. And kick him. <laughs> no. Just to see what just to see what I could lay me hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person that I am. But, but Jenny. I'll be in court tomorrow, they said. Some cove came by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. Said it was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. Gina, you are strong and smart and brave, and I love you. Get a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't lawyer. be staring at me any more obviously if she tried. <laughs> okay, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, I will yeah. you. <laughs> All right, fine. You twisted my arm. <laughs> Why are you being like this, Ginny? We should talk about that. Come on. I don't understand, Gina. Why did why did you send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers. Representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be rigged anyway. The whole trial. Well, pin it on me, because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? That's how it's always been for me. Growing up in the back slums me whole life. 
Yeah, this was a shit time and place to be an orphan. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates dragged off like coppers. Or worse. That happened to me before and all. Been sold out and nearly snaffled on the back by it. Or back of it. Snaffled. Uh. <laughs> 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 I just you can't trust it. no one, that's the point. Soon, as soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Oh, oh. Gina, what does snaffled mean? If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could- ah! Forget it! Jimmy! Don't you trust Runo? Nah. I don't. <laughs> Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. Okay. What about what happened though? Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers? There's nothing to tell. Figured it'd pay <laughs> me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. The old bloke walked in on me, and you know the rest. Would you say that there's nothing to discuss? There is nothing to discuss. But why, Ginny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot of work, and half the time you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure the true reason wasn't something else? Oh, give it a rest! What'd be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I could say would make... Uh, nothing I could say would make a blind bit of difference! Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've... I've told some unforgivable lies I have. Good for you, Ginny. <laughs> My natural name is Annie. Oh. What do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? Well, let's talk about that. What'd you mean before, Jimmy, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. We're out of time. I gotta want to question me now. Jimmy, please! Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. What? Cat! A photographic print of a really adorable cat? Look at that cat! Look at it! I found it in one of the pockets of his coat. Ain't no point in me having it. Is that the other thing that the guy wanted? I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Ginny. White cat photograph has been entered into the court record. Hold up a sec. Take Hold a on. look at that cat. Hang on. Take look a look at that cat. Look at this photograph. This is an adorable little cat. I think it looks a little like Wagahai. I always thought the cats like to crawl up inside under the heated kotatsu blanket whenever it snowed. Maybe British cats are different. Sorry, but we're built different. Hi. <laughs> Look on the back of this print here. There's something written on it. 20th of February, 9 p.m. Article deposited one small box. Loan amount paid 10 shillings. Redemption deadline, 13th of April, 9 p.m. 13th of April. What day is it today? 16th. It's the 16th now. Okay. So this photographic print is a redemption ticket. 
30th of February, that could be significant. Oh my god, it's the Hopstock Day. <laughs> It was just two days before they murdered on the omnibus, wasn't it? A small box. That doesn't tell us much about it, does it? Bruno, if Mr. McGillard still had the ticket, then presumably he never redeemed the article. So you think the box might still be present somewhere in the shop? Ah, uh, yes. If it's something Mr. McGillard deposited, we need to investigate. White cat photographs information has been updated in the court record. Okay, we'll look for that. Mm. It would have been a pun sell, right? Yeah, probably. Well, all right, bye, Gina. A small box. Uh, so small whether box. it's on display or somebody bought it, I hope it's on display. Because <laughs> if somebody bought it, God, that's gonna be a pain. I have to like find the receipt. Hello, Bobby. Could it be the one with the crank, perhaps? This is where it happened, then. Last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. But... Apart from the policeman here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. I don't know about that. No, you're right about that, actually. <laughs> no, no. I mean, she kind of is. The only thing is, like, the uh, something fell in front of the desk, and that's the only thing. It's a shattered thing. lamp. All right, whatever. That's, that, that, that's what I mean, being the only thing. Mm. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals, all dressed in black. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder. Exactly. Or are that... Hey! Oh, Inspector. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I suppose I ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. Yeah, we got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. G give me your prize. D d payment. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that. Give me the your prize. The hell off. The hell off twice. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd been saying extra men to beat around here. To the beat around here, Greg, see? Now look what happened. Hurt has been injured because there were enough police on duty. Yeah. Duty. Ah! <laughs> you, you lady ship! No one told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. Yeah, of course, your ladyship. Oh, very best doctor in the capital. Oh, I didn't do as we speak. And I don't think it's Rudolph's fault that the ro rogues managed to get away, is it? Chase the criminals is the police's job. <laughs> oh, absolutely, your ladyship. As you say, ma'am. As you say. The dead and black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. Would you believe it? He's like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Oh, we're all my manners. Uh, are you first to your ladyship? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> you like some juice? Some nice refreshing fruit juice? Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Crixie? I have some of my special herbal tea with me. If you'd like some. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, God. Oh, 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 Where did the teacup come from? Oh, lovely. So, so you so very much. That really it to sport, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. <laughs> Gregson is great. Boy, I can't wait until you like me as much as you like her. Um, oh, <laughs> hey, you're blocking the, the view there, sir. Get out of my way. <laughs> the police are scouring every inch of this place by the look of it. What is it, Ark? You go, go for it now. He's gone. <laughs> uh, uh, Jay. Yeah, I guess Shom's, it, dead. Shom's is dead. So uh, let the word be spread. Instructions from the yard are to examine every article in the shop, every letter and book of the account. Every article, Perfect. but but that's a ridiculous amount of work, surely. We've been all out of ever since the shop was declared a crime scene in the early hours. We're sitting through all the ships in the ships, but still. 
Wow, I don't think there was a single word in there. <laughs> we'll be working through the nightmare for sure, and even if then, we'll barely even scratch the surface. A crime in a pawnbroker's. It must be every policeman's worst nightmare. Hmm? <laughs> it's every couple's worst nightmare, you know, a crime in the pawnbroker's. Oh, thank you. Get out of my way! Hey, 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 hey. Go to nah. You jerk. All right. Fine. Well, you don't. You don't need to investigate anything over there. I want to look at the box. <laughs> so, how is what the invest? <laughs> How's the investigation going, Inspector? Nothing to it, really. Very simple case. This. There's some very definitive evidence. We were just about to charge that diaper we arrested last night. In fact, Gina, you're you're gonna charge her? Oh, that's right. Should be able to uh, bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Are you ready to be very upset? Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, show me! Oh, your ladyship has uh, as much as I wish as I could oblige you, I'm afraid. I see. You've already captured a pair of thugs who broke in here last night, have you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? What? Ow. 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 Good. Ow. Ow. How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me to never try to keep a secret from Iris. So you hey, arrest- Hey, Bruno! Mm-hmm. Who's my daddy? Ah! So you've- ah. Uh, John H. Wilson. So you've arrested the two men who <laughs> shot Mr. Sholmes, have you? <laughs> I told the truth. Good. <laughs> uh, well, yes. They were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade, Lestrade. Is, oh. mm, and Lestrade is being held at the prison. Oh, sorry about that. She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted a key from the jail, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Eh, yeah, sorry. I'm not at liberty to disclose that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's been operated at Mrs. at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. Uh, it's the hospital's policy. No visit at all. Oh. The board must have hit an artery in his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh no. He didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But an hemorrhage luck back is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is human like the rest of us, you know. Is he now? <laughs> Fascinating. Well, anyway, he's uh, having emergency surgery right now. We've got to stop the bleeding. But he will be alright, won't he? They'll be able to make him better. Uh, of, of course, your ladyship. It'll be as right as rain before you know it. Oh. Really? How do you know? How do I know? Uh, because, <laughs> uh, um, um, of course, uh, uh, yes, because Mr. Soames is such a great detective, that's why. <laughs> we better pray that detectives have a better grasp of what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear, please don't die, Hurley. What does this girl have on this guy? Everything. Oh, tea. Oh, <laughs> I'll report to your lady. Shit, for a moment, I hear he's out of uh, the operating theater. She makes all of his fish and chips, so he's <laughs> he's he's addicted. She, she's his supplier. <laughs> you see this gun? It has a seasoning. Oh. Why? Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. What? Out of it, sunshine. 
Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. I, I haven't a foggiest idea of what you're talking about. Watch this sauce, Sonny. I'm a copper. And we don't go in for favoritism. Oh, really? But he's right. You do treat us differently. It's because those adventures are Erlock like Shome stories, that's why. Is he worried that she'll paint him in a worse light in these stories? Oh. Um... Now, why would I ever do that? I crop up in him, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Hmm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Solmes's lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my pay doubled. Doubled, wow. I tell you. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that is amazing. All because every night at the yard reads them. They read all their like Sholm stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course, that explains everything. It was around that time that you became a, uh, just a toady to me. <laughs> Can you blame me? <laughs> oh, it's like it's one bad word from you and Sholmes could change his tune about me. Gregson, no. The great detective will say he's getting quite overrated these days. Think of what would happen to my salary if that came out in print, eh? This little crawl has a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing gives me the willies. Can't tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worrying about it. <laughs> but that would never happen, Gregson. Every month when the new Rants magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. <laughs> Surely it's because of my good writing, isn't it? Ah, uh, how wonderful of you. Oh, oh, how awful of you, I mean. <laughs> Here, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. He sounds nice. I'm going to make some tea after this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, lovely. You're yeah, very much that really at the spot, your ladyship. Is, oh. is, is Ta thank you? I guess. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Probably. Teetotal. A teetotaler. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's something I'm supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Narayano. Yes, what is it? I've got an important message for you. Clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Well, out with it, man. Tell yeah. me. I don't think I will. Are you going to tell me what this important message is, then, Inspector? No, I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your assistant. Is she gone? Is she kidnapped? Did tell me that this didn't happen, Gregson. Oh, we absolutely kidnapped her. <laughs> Dear Susie. Is she all right? She's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. Mm -hmm. No, nope, not anymore. She had it off. She, mm, she had it off. Head off? Where? The Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. Okay. Yes, of course. I'd forgotten about that. Well, now at least we... I guess now Ryanosuke has a good excuse for not having joined her. Yeah. One of the whipstock stuck her there in the yard carriage after we'd finished questioning her. But she has to tell you that uh, she didn't have the fare for the return journey and to go to meet her there. Mm-hmm. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming messaging service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. I appreciate it. Why did Susie have to go to see Lord Chief Justice? She didn't tell me. But I'd better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her right away. 
I'd love to do that right away, but there's so many things to look at. I have to look at them. So many well, so many do you think you're going to be allowed to look at all the things? Come on. Maybe? All right, then. Let's see what you can uncover. Boy, what do you think you're doing, Sunshine? Can't touch anything in here. Gregson. Oh, but <laughs> we were hoping to investigate. What? This is a crime scene, for Pete's sake. No touching. Yeah, and I'm inevitably going to be defending on it. Have you signed the paperwork? No. Didn't think so. Uh. <laughs> What's the problem, Greg C? Rune is a lawyer. You know that. Oh, oh. Mm. Uh. <sighs> I'm ever so sorry, your ladyship. Ever so sorry. The rules and regulations are falling in my side. Of course, if Mr. Narahodo was to have been properly appointed by the accused, that would be another matter. I'm gonna slap your hat out of your hand. The accused. <laughs> if you could show me some representation papers, I'd be only too happy to let you nose around. Did you hear that, Reno? You need Jenny to sign some representation papers. Uh, it looks like present. Stop it. <laughs> it looks... <laughs> you stop that. <laughs> it looks like presenting the detective here with the correct paperwork is the only way. Gregson is great. Now. Fine. Nina mentions some other person trying to get representation papers from her. Oh, the. It was a public uh, defender. She yeah. said that she sent him off. Public uh. defender. Oh, okay. I am very of a monumental general of his better <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go find out what happened to my assistant. It's April. I'm sure she's fine. Yes. No matter how many times I come here, I always get the same sense of oppressiveness somehow. All you have to do is have genius sign his papers. That might be a problem, as I'm not sure she can read. So do you think that this guy is like surrounded by pitfalls that lead at least to the next floor every day of his life when he comes to work? Oh yeah, and the floor's underneath randomized every day. Oh wow, what game, what Terrifying. are you referencing? Roguelike. Okay. <laughs> Just roguelike in general. Mm. Do you think the place he's oppressive? I think it's normal. How so? I mean, look at that suit of armor over there. You can't take that seriously, can you? Maybe it thinks the same about you. Uh... I either learn or you. So everything is Gentlemen? clear with, with regard to tomorrow's arrangements, I trust. <laughs> Mr. Yes. Potter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ah, <laughs> oh, she's fine. Okay, great. There they are. Suzanne so Lord, Lord fine, Strongheart. Now. I wonder what they're talking about. They both look very serious. Let's eavesdrop. Very good. There is nothing further to discuss. You may return. <laughs> you may return to your lodgings. Why has that line been ruined for us? Jay. Yeah. <laughs> the orange one. Sound. <laughs> no what doubt. is the source of that mysterious ticking? No doubt you have much to do in preparation for your return to your homeland. Oh, no. Hey, I don't like that. Wait, what did he just say? Your return to your homeland? Suzato-san! Oh, um, Mr. Naruhodo. Thank you, birds. What was all that about? Ah, Mr. Naruhodo. Thank you for coming to collect your call. What's this all about? Why were you talking about Miss Susato's return to her homeland? And, and... Tomorrow? Tomorrow? And what about Ginny's trial? You mean... Yes! He's been formally charged now. Oh dear. Uh, that sucks. Let's talk. Miss Suzato, what's this all about? Oh, 
Please don't concern yourself, Mr. Narihodo. It's only me going back to Japan. My wife here can continue. That's not what I asked. What happened? Why are you leaving? It's my father. He's fallen ill. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> Professor Mikitoba? Oh, yeah, this guy. Who oh, voiced this wonder. guy? Wounder. Wounder? Wounder. Who is me? What? Oh, what do you sound like? <laughs> if I may. Yes, sorry. You must be the defendant. Rinosuke Norohodo, I believe. Yes, yes, that's right. I think he just sounded kind of big. <laughs> My name is Yujin Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. You may not. We received an international telegram from the Empire of Japan informing us of the news. Ten days ago, father collapsed with a fever. The cause is apparently unknown. And it seems he grows weaker day by day. I, I don't believe it. As you are aware, the voyage from here to your country's capital, Tokyo, takes some 50 days. I thought it would be prudent to hasten Miss Suzado's departure as much as possible. Yes, absolutely. I will leave London first thing tomorrow morning. I can't believe this is happening. Oh. So, Gina has been charged? She'll have to appear in court? Yes, yeah, she was formally charged a few hours ago, and the date of the trial has already been set for tomorrow. No! Not even 24 hours later! Hmm. Gina. Ah, the Lestrade girl and the murder of the Baker Street pawnbroker, yes. An all too transpicious case. The pickpocket was clearly disturbed mid robbery and shot the man in a panic. No, the yard is overstretched as it is without wasting time on these open and shut cases. It's not wasting time! Jamie would never do that! Something like that. Hmm. Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, uh, yes, Lord Strongheart. In def deference of your fine services to date, I shall overlook this young girl's insolence. But I have no recollection of admitting a child into my office. Leave now. <gasps> of course, Lord Strongheart. Criminals will tell the most palpable lies in order to evade justice. The police can ill afford the time it takes to unravel all their untruths. Meanwhile, more crimes are perpetrated. We have far more serious matters with which to contend. Serious matters? Didn't Gregson mention something like that yesterday? Yes. Inspector Gregson made a similar remark yesterday. It's no concern of yours, though I'm sure I need not remind you of that. Oh, three minutes precisely until my next meeting. You must excuse me. Uh, There's just one more thing, Mr. Strongheart. Lord Strongheart. Which is, get my name right. It's Miss Lestrade's trial. I wonder if you might permit me to defend her. A timely suggestion. Sorry? The girl currently has no representation. We knew that already! <laughs> yes, she may be a pickpocket, but she still deserves a fair trial. Do not misunderstand me, young lady. The government provides for those too poor to afford representation with a public defender. The accused need only sign the relevant paperwork, and the defense barrister will be assigned to the case. <laughs> However, the young girl in question has refused that right. Why would she do that? A question you would do well to direct to Miss Lestrade. You'll find her at the local prison. 
Yes, thank you. Hm. Now then, it's time I was leaving. Good day to you. What a day. Gina charged with murder. Suzato-san about to leave. Come, Mr. Tantahuro. Iris, uh, we must make haste. But, Susie... You're leaving for Japan tomorrow morning, aren't you? Don't you have packing and things to do? As Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant, my personal circumstances are of no consequence. My sole purpose remains to help you in whatever way I can. Thank you, Mrs. Otto. That's a very pensive look. I think we ought to vi visit Gina first. In any case, I should like to wish her well before I leave. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go. If I'm honest, this has completely thrown me off. I'll just have to do what I can as a lawyer. Well, that sucked. Let's mm, go back to the prison. Bit. It's April. Ah. Time to reload. Hello again, Gina. Don't do it. No, no. Here just I go. Slap, <laughs> slap it out of her hand. <laughs> what are you lot for here for now? To have the muzzle that grenade launcher shoved in our faces yet again, obviously. Of course. Hmm. I think I need to improve the way you load on ammunition into that <laughs> thing, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> it takes so long. Look. You can come as many times as you like, but I ain't got nothing more to say to you. Gina, I wonder if you might hear me out. There's something I'd like to say. What? I'm sorry to say that I must reluctantly bid you farewell. Huh? Farewell? Tomorrow I must begin my journey back home to Japan. I fear we may never meet again. Oh, right. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many lovely people here in London. I have so many wonderful memories. And yet, as things stand now, it will be a glum parting indeed. Oh, Iris is so miserable. Susie. Well, well, that ain't my business. Both Iris and Mr. Nadahodo believe you to be innocent, Gina. They've put their faith in you. But somehow, you can't find it in your heart to put your faith in them. Yeah, that's right, I can't! What of it? It grieves me greatly to have to say goodbye to my friends. Well, they are so clearly unhappy. Because of you. What? It's my fault? Yes. So, I have one final request, Gina, before our paths may never cross again. Right here and now. I want you to show both of them that you don't deserve the faith they've invested in you. Huh? Only by doing that will you truly be as alone as you claim to be. What are you talking about? What do you expect me to do, eh? You've told us, you've told us that everyone lies. So prove it, by admitting one of your own untruths. It, 
what about you? Uh, what you said before, Jimmy? You said something about unforgivable lies. You must tell Mr. Naruhodo and Iris the truth now. That is my last request before I leave. My last request as a judicial assistant. No, I... I can't. Whatever these lies are, they're obviously weighing very heavily on Gina's mind. Gina, I could be wrong, but... Is it something to do with what happened two months ago? Something about that trial? The one in which M Magnus McGilded was acquitted? Uh. The case of the that mysterious murder that took place inside the omnibus. You were called as a witness by the prosecution. Is that what this is about? Yeah, you're right. Because in that trial, I lied. I lied like you wouldn't believe. Hmm. Will you tell us about it now? I think she will. The trial is back! Like you said, it all happened about two months ago. The cop has got a hold of me and shoved me in the witness stand. And based on your testimony, Mr. McGilded was declared in innocent. Yeah, well, the thing is, I lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I knew it. What sort of thing did you lie about? I was hiding under the seat that night. That was the truth. It was pitch black in that little cabiole. Couldn't see a thing. And then... I heard a loud thud, like someone falling on the floor. And that's when Mr. McGilded discovered you? Yeah. He pulled me out from under the seat and sat, ne or sat me next to the dead man. There wasn't much light to see. There wasn't much light to see by, but when I looked at me on, I had the I had the cove's blood all over him. I was so scared, I couldn't even speak. You had his blood on your hands? In other words, it was Gina that the witnesses on the roof deck saw through the skylight. Then Mr. McGill had started asking you questions, I suppose. Who you were and why you were hiding underneath the seat. Yeah, you did. Only... That's not all. What do you mean? I mean he threatened me. Threatened you how? He made me swear. About what I'd seen and what I'd heard. And about what he was gonna do after the cove he found was dead. He made me swear I wouldn't tell no one about any of it. But at that, he, he said he'd let me scarf it before the coppers showed up. Gina, you must tell me what he swore you to secrecy about. What you saw, what you heard, everything. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you said McGilded made you swear not to tell anybody what you saw. But you were in the pitch black compartment under the seat the whole time, weren't you? Yes, with Mr. McGilded sitting above your head, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's true, but... It was when I heard the thub of the COVID in the floor. Let out a little scream, see? Couldn't help it. The gilded heard that and dragged, dragged me out of my, by me arm. That's when I saw it. It was on the floor next to the old geezer that what had been stabbed. A disc, all bright and shiny. A disc? I know Iris moved, but it wasn't me. <laughs> Do you mean... 
Yep, that's it. The one what a D or the one what the D took off or took off me at the wind banks. So the music box disc was there on the floor of the omnibus? <laughs> Not for long. McGill had spotted it and straight away. He picked it up smartish and stuffed it inside his pocket. So that disc was in the omnibus two months ago at the scene of Mr. Mason's murder. And the bug trotter told me. I learned to mutter a word of it to no one. Hmm. Because it was so dark under that seat in the cab, I was straining my ears the whole, the, 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 the whole time. After a while, I heard the door and footsteps inside the cabin. Presumably, that was McGilded getting on board. <laughs> nah, not only him. Oh. Because I could definitely make out the footsteps of two people. Hmm. In that case, it would seem likely that it was Mr. McGilded and the victim. Mr. Thrice fired Mason. In the testimony at, during the trial, Mr. McGilded claimed he stepped er, claimed he slept during the carriage ride. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You thought you were safe for tonight, Jake. You thought we were done. Well, I, I thought I gonna have this whole scene and they're gonna threaten him and I'm like, I can remember the voice. I can. But whenever I'm in the carriage, I take it with a fierce tiredness and I've always succumbed to it. <laughs> I guess that was it! Drive <laughs> <laughs> me back, Piper! Fuck it all! Yeah, you'll back be back. You'll, you'll yeah, be back. He'll definitely be back. And your own testimony, Gina, supported his. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Yeah, that weren't exactly true. Neither of them was asleep. I could hear them talking the whole time. My voices. What? What were they talking about? Sorry. Dunno. The sound of the horses and the wheels was just too loud. But that still tells us something. Mr. McGilded and the victim knew each other. So McGilded was lying, as I suspected. I knew it weren't gonna take long before someone raised the alarm that the bloke had been killed. Yes, you were quite right. The other passengers on the roof deck noticed very quickly. So, when the cab came to a stop, McGilda told me- er, wait, no. So, when the cab came to a stop, McGilda told me to hide and, and back in the seat again. I climbed in and waited. Two coves from up top ran off to get the coppers. Yes, um, Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Right. And after they'd gone, McGill had asked the driver to do him a favor. A favor? Now then, fella, what I need you to do is take the coat of mine and deposit it with the nearby pawnbroker. You. And for your trouble, let's see now. I'll give you ten guineas. Bebal. A nearby pawnbroker. You mean on ba Baker Street? Yep, you got it. It was Winderbanks. The coachy snapped up the money and ran off to pop this coat in as fast as he could. So then there was no one left in the carriage. Mr. McGill did open the box under the seat and let me get out of there. Not without conditions. I see. Damn you, Beppo. <sighs> Squint! <sighs> so 
squint at the clock. Squint! The one you truly should have squinted at. The clock at that one. Squint. It's 10 p.m. Do we, do we stop? Do we I stop? I think we have to stop. Ah, Unfortunately. Yeah, save. I'll save. It's fine. Might as well. I wanted to at least have Gina request our services before we stop. Damn it. Damn it! Ah, the plot thickens. There was so much setup in this stream, and then suddenly it all got very heavy right at the end. Yeah. Uh huh. My God. You think this is the last one? Eh, yeah, but we'll have to get to it next time. Yeah. yeah. Ah, damn it. Oh, well. Well, this is very interesting. I'm really looking it's forward fun. to seeing what else is going on. What is happening? What's going on? Yeah, is this McGill case suddenly got very interesting. What is McGill did do? Is he dead? He's definitely dead, right? He's got to be dead. Unless I he's think not. he faked his dead. Maybe he's not I think dead. he's alive. Oh, guys. Squint. I guess we'll find out. Squint! I'm going to squint everywhere. <laughs> Nobody is unsquinted at. What are we doing tomorrow? Uh, well, you mentioned Pokemon. earlier in the stream, but we're doing Pokemon. Pokemon, Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon. Pokemon. Tomorrow. Hooray. Look forward to it. Where That's start it. Jay will definitely be awake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm not supposed to get my COVID booster today, but due to a series of unfortunate events, could not get that one. So I have to oh. get it at 10.30 tomorrow. Now, oh. if it doesn't affect me, it should be fine. There are two hospitals with the same name and two two hours away, and I'm... <laughs> that sucks. Are gonna beat Tobro or Fraze Cam so you can stop vocalizing your squinting? No, I, I'm just gonna. Ha uh, even if that ever happened, I would continue to say squint. I would. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I sure would. G. G. All right, everybody. Ah, uh, what kind of soup was this? What kind of soup? What kind of soup? What do, what do we have for dinner? Did they ever say what we were having for dinner? I don't think they did. Death Black oh, soup. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, it was, uh -huh. it was, fuck. It was, no, it was, it was, it was cucumber pizza soup. <laughs> no. Uh, no. That's it. Run that, it! It just, just, certainly was no. not. That brings context to the opening that we were saying you had to pay for it for to watch the podcast, Jay. I, I forgot about it. it. It's a teaser to get them to subscribe. Shut up. We're advertising. <laughs> We appreciate it, by the way. Caramel disc soup. Good. Yes. Caramel, Caramel disc soup. soup. Yeah, Caramel. there you go. There we go. It's what's going to happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. That's it for us. Thank you all very much for coming, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.